All right, y'all, what's up? Welcome to the after show. Yeah, yeah, it's the after show. After show vibes. Indeed. Um, guilty pleasures. This after show is going to be about what some of our guilty pleasures are. Um, I've got a few listed. I'm sure Josh has I got a few so, listed I, down. I'm so interested in seeing what you have to say. Yeah. It's, I never know what I'm going to get from you. It's interesting it's, stuff. Interesting stuff. Kick it off. I'll kick it off. Uh, one of my guilty pleasures. So first I'm going to define a guilty pleasure, right? Define. Let the people know what their we'll, guilty pleasures we'll are. We'll define a guilty pleasure. People. That is, a guilty pleasure is something such as a movie, television program, or piece of music that one enjoys despite feeling that it is not genuinely held in high regard. So something you may like that other people think is shitty. Guilty pleasure, hmm. right? And then also things that you may like that you know that aren't good. It's garbage, right? It's not good for you. It's not good for your soul, for your brain, for your state of mind. Mm. First thing for me, all the love and hip hop shows except for Miami. You watch all of them? I've seen every single one of them. Not every single episode, but I've seen every single denomination of love and hip hop. Of course, there's New York. There's Atlanta. What's your favorite? There's LA. Of course, my favorite is New York. Come on now. Of course, my favorite you know is New Cardi York. Cardi B. But my favorite. I know you know Cardi B and Joe Budden. I know you. Oh. Joe Budden, Sin Santana. I don't know any of those. People. Erica Mena. You know Erica Mena. I don't. Don't tell me who it is. Yo, yo, yo. Okay, let me tell you something. <laughs> Safari. Yo, if your man tells you. All right, like so. Let's say you're like, yo, so and so was there. So and so was there. So and so was there. Joints, uh-huh. right? All girls. And your man's just like, yo, nah, I don't know Erica. <laughs> and then your boy repeats it. Nah, you know Erica. Nah, you know That's Erica. That's a setup. I'm like, no, I told you I don't. Like the first time. The worst part is if your girl is with you and, you, and, and you're talking to you. This is like, this is like just bro code 101. Let's just go to bed. If you hear somebody saying, hey, like you, you, know, you know Janet, right? Like from last month. And then you're like, nah. Timelines don't don't exactly right. Timeline. Like, nah, I don't know Janet. It's like my nigga, you know Janet. <laughs> and the girl is in there like, tell us. Ooh, my girl. Tell my, me more. My girl wants <laughs> let us. Tell me more. Not nah, we're interested. We're listening. Yeah, but I, all the love and hip hops. Like okay, I love and hip hop. Stevie J is my guy. Wow. Uh, <laughs> And um, yeah, I, I'm, I've just I've just liked it. I've enjoyed it. I know it's no good for me. I know it's no good for black people, but it's something that I uh, that I like. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, my one of my guilty pleasures is that I love cereal mm. at night. Cereal at night. At night. How late at night do you like? Are this we cereal? talking any time when it, when it gets dark? <laughs> <laughs> After hours, it's, <laughs> your nasty time is with cereal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and I have a very unhealthy relationship, but I just switched over to Special K, so that should be a lot more healthier than Frosted Flakes. Copy that. Okay. Wait, hold on. I don't know if this is recording sound. <sighs> test, test. Are you recording sound? We want to know. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Sound is good. All Sounds right. Sounds good. Sound is good. Live, live after show. Indeed. I'm not. I'm not cutting Sounds that. Like- That's going to be in there. Um, all right, so my next uh, guilty pleasure, Jay-Z's Kingdom Come album. <laughs> What's so funny? Because, like, I'm not well-versed in, in Jay-Z albums. I can't tell you track list. I can't tell you. I can't name all his albums, right? But I can't tell you that Kingdom Come was the worst one. <laughs> It's not about. I mean, it's once not you, bad though. It's, one, it's the one that the streets like are like, "Yo, we didn't need this." Yeah, hoe. they do that, but this so there's good songs actually, on it. Actually, that was like that was like my introduction to Hove. So that's why I'm like so like I love Kingdom Come. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. <laughs> I think it gets a bad rap. Yeah, uh, it has some good songs on it. It has "Show Me What You Got." It has uh, "Lost One." It's got "Beach Chair." It has good. It has good songs on it. Like yeah. there are better Jay Z albums. There are much better Jay Z albums, but Kingdom Come isn't bad. I know why you like it. Why do I like on it? The album cover, he has the cover. On the album cover, he has the same Nike fitted you had on, and you probably had that same jacket. You probably wore this exact fit. This exact outfit at some point in yeah, time in my life. You know, you so New York. Maybe I did. Oh gosh, I used to work with Trevor, right? So Trevor would come to work, and he would have the um, hood booger North Face. Um, it's not a fanny pack. It's like the North Face book bag that oh, goes around your waist. The satchel that goes around your waist. And, like, that's fine. Like, that's cool. Like, not a fanny, not a book bag, not a small bag, not a big bag. That's cool. 
no problem with that. But he would also combine those with foams. <laughs> <laughs> That is a killer. Which is a telltale sign that he is a queen's nigga. North faces and foams go together like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. H- hand and h- ham and cheese. Hand in hand, ham and cheese. Hand in hand, ham and cheese, yeah. peanut butter and jelly. They just they just go together very well. They go together great, very well. Great combo. Um, my guilty pleasure would be. It's weird because I think like a lot of people like him. Um, okay. a lot a lot of people like him a lot. But I actually think to the core, I think he's one of the corniest people out there. Mm-hmm. But his music is so damn good. No, I'm not talking about Drake. You <laughs> wrong. Okay. Nick um, Cannon. No, stop. That's a, <laughs> that's not a guilty pleasure. That is guilt. Um, no, for me, it's Tory Lanez. I think he makes amazing. Whoa, watch your face. Tory Lanez makes amazing music, and he is highly talented. Amazing music. Yeah, really good music. He's a really good artist. I wouldn't say amazing. He's not music. a lyrical miracle. So if you're looking for the Kingdom Come bars, you're not gonna find that on Tory Lanez album. You have to know your your personnel. But he makes great music. Is he a cornball? Yeah, and he's also really great for quarantine radio. Yeah, that was an era, right? That was an era. That was a time. And what a time to be alive. Brazil. Let's. Just... I can start rattling off countries. I was like, wow, these are amazing places. I'm just. I just haven't. Been big into Tory Lane's music. He he does like the remix thing, like remaking old songs, old samples. It's not all he does, but continue. That is, I mean, it's, it's all he does. That's that's what has made him most popular, right? Uh, I put him on the map, and I think that's a skill, though. I think it's a skill to to uh, be able to take original content, put a spin on your own, and still get the love from there. Like you know both. what I you know what I think a skill is being original. I think that's a skill too. Baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sheen. We didn't even speak about Beast we're gonna, we'll, we'll get to that after our, after our okay, guilty pleasures. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Sorry Lanes. All right. Hater. For me, uh, all those Justice League movies, the Batman oh, movie, the Superman movie, give it up. the Wonder Woman movie, give Aquaman. Up. I loved all yeah. them shits. Loved every single one of them. Y'all thought they were trash? I did not. I have them here and I watch them. I watch them pretty frequently. Watch it pretty frequently. Okay. Yeah, no petty. I like. I think Ben Affleck was a great Bruce Wayne. I think Henry Cavill was a great Christian Superman. Bale is the greatest Bruce Wayne. The um, the who is Christian, Christian Bale. Bale? He was a great Batman. He wasn't a great Bruce Wayne. Uh, okay, good point. Touche. Yeah, he was a great Batman. He wasn't a great Bruce Wayne. But he was, but 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 with being Bruce Wayne is almost damn near easy. Okay, you're a billionaire, so yeah, like you just have to show up. But I think uh, Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne, he was the billionaire guy, the billionaire playboy guy, but you also like saw the pain. He was. He, he was, was very he, he conflicted, was, he very was damaged, been in Gotham City for over 20 years doing the same shit, very like pleasure, broken right? down. Look what we opened up. <laughs> Trevor over here. Deep diving it. I do that. No, I, do that. I, love, I love Batman. Batman's my favorite. Batman's the fave. Um, yeah. What you got, what you got okay. next? Um, I love magic. <laughs> Why is this nigga laughing at me? <laughs> Do you have magic in here? You don't even have magic in here. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been laughed at like this. <laughs> Why? Why is that funny? Oh shit! Okay, he don't believe he don't believe in magic. Yo, this is <laughs> it's the way you said it too. Cause I was excited. You're I like, excited. I love magic. <laughs> Yo, I've been watching Magic for Humans on Netflix, and it, it's getting me going. Okay, I love magic. It's so good. <coughs> Big okay, fan I'm back. Of magic man. I'm back. Big fan of magic. Really? Yeah. Like when you were a kid, did you like the magicians at the birthday parties and stuff like no, that? No, no, no. I, I, I grew up in a um. Or like the hood magicians. I grew up in a different <laughs> black house, so we weren't at the at the functions. <laughs> who, who could afford a magician <laughs> at the party? You lucky if your uncle pulled up and did some tricks. Your uncle pulled up, pulled some flowers out of the <laughs> and office. he took your money. For, you're lucky if you got <laughs> out hustled by your uncle's magic trick at your birthday at a hood at a hood function to be. To be honest. Hey, nephew, give me that 20. I'll make it 40. I'll make it. Oh, uh, make it 40. Make it. And he, and he does it at first. You know what I'm saying? It's 40. And then you're like, oh, he's like, all right, give me another 20. You're like, oh, I'm about to be up 80. And then Ooh. now you're broke. And then you told your dad. Your dad told you. You're like, yo, 
We always told you never give your Uncle G money. The magic I got hit with, with the, was the niggas on Jamaica Ave that did like the, the three cups. card money shit okay. or the cops and stuff like that. I always wanted, I always I wanted did, to outsmart them. I did it one time yeah. and I was up and I was up and I was like, I was hype. And then uh, I did it the last time and then they took like $60 from me and I felt like the biggest fucking idiot on the planet. 600 no, 60. Oh, okay. 60. No, not 600. How was I, baby boy? No, I, I, I couldn't walk away in my house if that shit happened. Yeah, as no I, was, I was young. Uh, no, magic's fire. Like, not schemed magic. Like, if you enjoy magic in the slightest bit, I encourage you to watch Magic for Humans on Netflix. What is it? Is it's 20-minute it? episodes. It's this guy, I believe his name is Justin Williamson. You know his name. Don't say you believe. I you believe. Know his, <laughs> you know this nigga's name. I believe it's Justin. That's your man. You know this He's nigga's bad. name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but I like I go on Google and I'm mean, YouTube and I literally will type in David Blaine and like I watch all his shit. Is he really magic or is he just like oh, a he stunt different. man? No, he's not even a stunt man. He's 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 in tune with something. Yo, th- like like he's 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 spit up frogs out of his. He's dr- he's drank this entire water bottle and mouth empty and then spit up a frog. Is that magic though, or is it just that like it's an extreme magic. physical feat? Uh, he th- th- there's so many things that he does with the magic. He, he, he tells you your card that you're thinking. He puts he puts your card in an orange. He cuts open the orange, and there's your card that you signed is in the middle of the orange. Tell me how the how does the card get in the orange? Magic is truly unbelievable. It is. It is. I'm sorry. Yeah, I've never seen you light up like that before. <laughs> I don't know what. Yo, y'all don't even understand. Magic is so good, bro. It's so good. Oh, you look like you just like had your first born in your hands. Yeah. Oh, man, speaking of youth, <laughs> ducking baby fever. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> ducking. Stop posting your cute ass kids on the internet. <laughs> Tired of seeing them. That's never been a, a thing that's influenced me. Oh, yeah, because you have no heart. Trevor, <laughs> mad baby. Like, it's going be a timeline full of babies. And trying to be like, scroll, 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 scroll. Cool baby, scroll, scroll. I'm like, oh my God, look at them. Look at them. You're like, yeah, nah. I love, I love kids. People know that. I love kids. I love like... Do you? The kids in my family, I've yeah. I never seen you do this. I never seen you use those good muscles for li- for, a, a, for a little toss. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good for a little baby toss. I'm great for a little what's baby your toss. Your hand-eye coordination. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be on point. Yeah, you need to be nice. It has to be on you point. Be nice. You don't take those How chances do you learn if it's not. Nice at that. How do you know you're good at tossing your baby and catching? I think it's a crapshoot every time dads throw their baby up in the air. Like them niggas don't know for sure, for sure that they're unless like you're. I've like, always felt Odell. confident. Odell is nice with catching the baby. But you know what's what's weird about this world is that Odell is a nigga that would drop a baby. <laughs> 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 and like a regular yeah. non-athletic yeah. person would just yeah. like toss a baby, flip it around, like throw it between their legs and catch it no problem. Odell would be a nigga like drops he a baby. Would, yeah, because he's, he's over, overthinking. Exactly. It's not a pig skin. Everything is an overthink for him. It's like, I got to catch it. Yeah, he going to try one hand at me. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like drop, that's, drop, yeah. Drop, drop, drop. It'll be nuts. Can't just like reach back for the baby, Odell. Hey. <laughs> um, my last guilty pleasure, uh, a television sh- a television show that I watch every time it's on, oh, uh, that I'm deeply involved in every time it's on. Mm-hmm. The storylines are compelling. Uh, my 600-pound life on the Learning Channel. If you're not familiar with My 600-pound life, they document... What do you like about that? What I like about... It's, it's an equal mix of... Damn, how'd you get that big? Disgust, redemption, and sympathy. Wow, what a story. It brings out like all these emotions. It brings out like it's empathy. Like, this is us for big people. Yes. Leave it off. Yes. Yes, that's what that was a setup. <laughs> it would make you cry. Just like this is us. Because there are times where I've watched it. And I've just been like, "This is us." Was never gonna get me. No, I made it a purpose. I've never this seen an episode us. of "This Is Us." Oh. I haven't. Not yet. I'll I'll binge it one day. Don't waste your time. I'll binge. <laughs> I'll binge it one day. Don't waste your There's a character time. there that could that. be on my 600 pound life. I've seen. Wow, Trevor. I'm just saying what I've seen. Oh She's very large. Oh she struggles with her weight in the show. I mean, doesn't. I mean. If I can tell she struggles. <laughs> she <does. laughs> Why is she <laughs> She's a nice lady. I'm sure she is. No, I didn't say struggling. anything about her character. No, and she and she goes through this thing. And she's, it's all it's all based. It's all because her brother. You want you want to know why she's six hundred pounds? Why she's six hundred pounds? Because her brother was like a star athlete, uh-huh. and like she was never like like she was always in the shadow of her brother, and she was never conf. 
you know how it goes, man. She just do people who are six hundred pounds really fit in other people's shadows? Just like <laughs> Trevor, as a trainer, you're not a nice guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just like scientifically, you're not a nice trainer. Who's who's fitting? Never mind. Keep going. I'm sorry. She, she yeah. So she had issues. Don't watch this as us, man. <laughs> You're gonna get some I'm not going to get the right like message from it, right? I'm not going to get the right no, things you, out of it. No, honestly, I don't think you would have sympathy if watching This Is Us. You would have this. You would think the same way I'm thinking. Mm, I feel you. I understand that. Fuck up. Everybody has... Okay, never mind. Yeah, everybody's sad all the time. Yeah, like, okay, cool. I have issues too. Got you. Um, but yeah, my 600 pound life. Okay. I like the success stories. And then there's even like some people that are there. And you're you're kind of like rooting for them. And then when they fuck up, you're like, damn it. Damn it, Jim. Why'd you go to Arby's? You know, <laughs> <laughs> Arby's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's where they go because they have the meats. Yeah, and that's why. They go. <laughs> that's why they go for the Arby's. And then, like, when you see one of them go to the gym, like, oh, yeah, Michelle, you're really doing it, man. Keep, keep going, keep going. They needed a progress reports, and they lost like hundreds of pounds, and they're happier. But the saddest thing in the show is when, like, a woman is like really, really big, and they have a husband or a boyfriend. And then they lose all the weight, and then the husband or boyfriend decides to leave them because they liked them as big and as unhealthy good. as they were. You about to, shorty, you look like a snack right now. You yeah, you about to get, get something. You about, you, about you about to get some good dick. And that's what <laughs> he's been giving you some whack dick because he felt like you're whack, so that's why he was giving you whack dick. Yeah, but you're gonna find someone who loves you for you now because you look good. You know what else I watch now? That's maybe like a guilty pleasure. You ever seen that show Botched? No. On uh on the E Channel. No. I've been like watching heavy episodes of that lately, and it's like people who get like fucked up plastic surgery. You like real, you like real things. Yeah, I don't watch much of real things. Yeah, and they get fucked up plastic surgery. Either their face or their body or their tits or their ass are fucked up, and they go to these doctors in LA, and the doctors fix like the the fucked up the surgeries monsters. that they had. Yeah, and one of the stories was this lady who was dating this guy. I forget their names. This was white lady, and she had a, a boob job. And it was so fucked up that it looked she had it looked like she had three titties, and not like a and not like a overwhelming not like a good three I have titties. Two hands. No, but I'm, I'm I'm talking about literally like one, two, three. Yeah, I can't touch like that. that. Yeah, no, one, two, it's like it's like I'm juggling. Ah, one, two, never juggle. I need a magician. <laughs> <laughs> I need a magician to help me juggle, <laughs> juggle all these titties. Um, <laughs> but her man was with her like throughout all of this. They had like bumps in the road, and then she finally gets her titties fixed, and she's in the and he's in the office, and he doesn't even seem that excited. Like for this ex- new exciting ride of two titties that he's about to experience. <clears throat> and then he leaves her. Are you ready? Go ahead. Because I'm pretty sure that years ago the conversation went like this. Babe, I want to get a boob job. Babe, I don't think you need to get a boob job. I think you Ooh. look great just the way you are. Mm-hmm. And then she went and got the boob job and the boob job got fucked up. So he's like, yo, I have to go and sit down with you through all this bullshit when I told you not to do it in the first place. So now I'm here. So I'm not thrilled. Oh, your boobs look normal the way they, was, they look just before you started this entire process. And I've been on re- reality TV and I'm miserable. That's why. In my, in my eyes. Good. I, never th- I didn't think about it like that. From a dude's perspective. Good point. I, I, I told you, you look great. But now you want to drag me through this. And now we have cameras in our house. And now you have three boobs. Now everybody knows that my wife has three boobs. I can't take this. <laughs> this is too much emotional stress for me. I'm leaving. And that, my friends, is for season two. Copy that. They should do like a, uh, on My 600 Pound Life and on Botched, they should do like a catch up to the partners or the partners yeah, that left because, after listen, people man, got better and improved. When you get into a relationship, you realize that it's not just me. And so what I'm going through and what I'm affected by, and what, you know what I'm saying? Like what's affecting you isn't just affecting you. It's affecting me as well. Like you're 600 pounds and it's affecting both of us. <laughs> and I can no longer be the little spoon. I can no longer be, I mean, you are Have the- Have you tried it yet? In bed? I have not tried the little spoon in bed yet. No, it's not. A, it's not a sex position. It's a. Uh, it's a position of sleep with a partner. So when you get a chance, try it. You don't have to be freaky to I'm try not, it. I, I'm not saying it's like. A, it. It's not like some freaky deaky shit. I know that. No, Trevor, you have one assignment next time. But I just don't want to be. I don't want to be the little spoon. Okay, and I'm saying try it, and then next week let me know how it was. Because I don't want to be a little spoon. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe in the after show, I will... make you less of anything. It this will be exclusive everything. after show stuff. Maybe I will try it. Try to do it for the people. We're doing an experiment. The people, we meet, the people want me to a little spoon? Yeah, they want, they want you to try new things even more first time. Chubby <laughs> <laughs> with the new moves. Oh, boy. All right. So, um, we can, you're, the B. Simone shit, I'm confused by it. Uh, Very confused by what it. Is, 
what are you confused by? What B Simone wants from life? What the nine to five? So there's two things: is she doesn't want a nine to five dude. I love how life is full circle. And then oh, doesn't it always? It's it always beautiful. comes full circle. And then it turns out that uh, she plagiarized some stuff from her book, like just like copy, copy and paste it. <laughs> <laughs> let's get them good. Let's get let's let's let's, let's tee this up because this is a good this is a good one for uh, for a clip. Because this B Simone thing is funny. B Simone came out and said she wanted an entrepreneur, somebody who understands her lifestyle, somebody who who is not working a nine to five, who is constantly thinking about his business, who's constantly growing his business, who can understand her and they can relate and be compatible. And everybody was kind of like on the fence, like, yeah, I kind of want a man who who's about that and understands me too. And then people were like, you know what? I don't think I want, I, like, what's wrong with a nine to five guy? And it was like two arguments, right? Mm-hmm. And everybody was up in arms. But then <laughs> a week goes by, maybe less than a week, and we find out that B. Simone, a, a author, um, <laughs> quotes, I... First of all, I'm not anybody. Anybody that talks like this, <laughs> baby boy, or talks like that, baby boy. I think it's funny. I I'm think, not. I'm not. I, I can't listen to her. I'm I not, think it's funny though. I'm not digesting your literature. Yeah, I can't, and that's a fact. But nonetheless, entrepreneur woman made a book. African. She's funny. I think she's funny. Yeah, she she got a book out. Yeah. She was talking about that X Y and Z, and we kind of find out that she did on her book what I did in my freshman sophomore. <laughs> junior senior year of college on every final paper and that was copy and paste that's what she did and um people were coming for her uh plagiarism is wrong you shouldn't do it uh but sitting from a point of where you think now because you plagiarized and you wrote a book and you're this some kind of self-proclaimed entrepreneur makes you better than the average working honest nine to five man i'm sorry sis you're fucking wrong. Uh, I think she is wrong. Listen, there's nothing wrong with having a preference. Um, Respect but to then, it. But then women also want, well, they want it all, right? You got to be the nine to five nigga. I'm sorry. You got to be the entrepreneur nigga mm-hmm. who, whenever you call him, is available to oh, you. Yeah, available trip, for. Let's <laughs> <laughs> take a flight. First class. <laughs> available for quality. T- <laughs> yeah, you are horrible. Uh you yeah, available for like quality time and, right. and everything and buy you this and buy you that, but then you also want him to be this mogul. But then if he doesn't have time for you, then it's an issue. But then if he's working nine and honestly the nine to five dude has more time. Yeah, at least he gets off at five. Has more time. You know exactly, you know what time he gets off. Yeah, you could, he's off make, at five. You could actually make plans with a nigga. You can have dinner, you can do a bunch of shit. And he gets you know? PTO. And he gets exactly and you know when that time <laughs> that and when PTO's given to him. And when he's off from work, he's off. From work, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, but then, like, it's great to be an no, entrepreneur. I also, your, I respect your presence. It's great to build your business, and I think that's it's dope. cool. But if I'm she's if she's in, if she's ready to deal with all that comes with, then dope. But it doesn't seem like she is. I think the bigger issue is that, like, you're not even like you're not even that big of a deal if you are plagiarizing your book. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even like no one's gonna match that fly. <laughs> Who's matching that? A con artist is gonna match because she's saying she. Well, I mean, I mean, let's just boil it. Let's just boil it down to it. She just wants to make it sells drugs, Oof. or raps, or raps, or does both. <laughs> raps about selling drugs. <laughs> Be Simone, you want yourself money bag yo, <laughs> like a nigga like that. Money bag yo ain't settling down with nobody. He, but that's and that's the thing. She wants she wants to think that's an entrepreneur, possibly sell drugs, raps, and faithful. A baby boy, and gives you quality time. She, where where is she is she building a nigga? You can't build him. She wants to she wants to build a nigga. Quality, yeah, quality time, good things, he wants, good things. Can't have it all, baby baby girl. She wants to build a nigga. <laughs> and listen, nobody's perfect, and everybody has their preferences, and that's dope. And maybe she will find somebody to give her all the things that she requires in a relationship. But all of these, it's very unlikely. And she may have yeah, to build yeah, a nigga. Yeah, 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 she yeah, may have yeah. to literally copy and paste different things into a document. And build a nigga. Yeah. And she knows how to do that. Hey, Kyrie's not playing basketball this offseason. Maybe they could connect. <laughs> nah. Yo, her and Kyrie would be nasty. That's a nasty guy. Because he couldn't even handle Kaylani. <laughs> Kaylani and Kyrie. <laughs> it's not up. So, um, yeah, I know. It's on that. Shit, I should have got both. Oh, so, so Kyrie and, and, and Kaylani, like, we know like Kyrie's a simp, right? And we it's know that Kaylani... Just wanted to go party next door. That's it. That's, that's all she that's, wanted to do. That's all she wanted to do. She that's all she wanted, wanted to do. And that's cool. To have a good time. And Kyrie wanted to simp it up. 
how he wanted to simp it up. Taking selfies. He was, he was, a, he was, he was tight. Was he on a losing Cavs team during this time? Uh, ooh, I got, I got to check the year. I don't know. I'm not sure. I feel like they were losing. I feel like LeBron was on that team. LeBron would not tolerate cheating. What do you mean? Yeah, like, Kalani, you cannot cheat on somebody. LeBron plays. Eh, with. LeBron, you're fucking up the mojo. LeBron don't control everything. Oh, you doubt the king. I doubt it from from doubt that standpoint. King. But Kalani yeah, she and just... Kyrie. Is it is the internet that great? Probably. It definitely is. Oh, we got some photos. Photos. Kyrie Ir- Ir- Irving apologizes to Kaylani. So this is in 2018. So he was winning. Uh, no, I think it was a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because he, he did some shit on Instagram uh, to Kaylani and apologized to her, I guess, for being a simp. Really toxic. And uh, it was very toxic. But once again, Kaylani just went to party next door. I don't know. And she had a very, um, very good invite to that party. And that party, she had some babies at that party too. Not with him. She didn't have a baby with party next door. No. Who she have a baby with? Her gay best friend. Oh, Trevor, that's another episode for another podcast, baby boy. If you're Kyrie Irving, or party next door, and you're doing all these things to stay with Kaylani. And she ends up having a baby with her gay best friend. Just take a break from life. No, thank God. After that, Go to church, dodge the bullet. How, did, how would you How would you feel if you were dating uh, If you were dating a girl, and after that, she only dated girls after that. If you're the last nigga. Has that, okay, that's a better question. Has that happened to you? To me? Yeah. Not that I know of. Has anybody gone lezzy? After me? After you? Lezzy-ish. Yeah, I've had Leslie vibes, maybe. Leslie ish. And it has nothing to do with me. They just wanted to Leslie it up. It might have had something to do with me. I no. Know. I don't know, maybe. No. I, I don't think We're it had not anything. Taking that. I don't think it had anything to do with me physically, but I think it had definitely had something to do with like, you know. Oh, how you gave it up. Yeah. How toxic. Max you were. the masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we do? Uh yeah. No, yeah. it's not what we do. We're nice guys. Not not we're very nice guys right now. Extremely nice guys right now. Um, Probably yeah. the nicest I've ever been in my life. The nicest? Yeah. What's this you want? What, what do you want? Yeah, take it. I'm, <laughs> is this the nicest I've ever been in my life? No, I was a kid. I was a really nice kid. I was good. I was good like 10, 11. I was a great kid. Very nice kid. Very warm. Oh, manners. Talk to oh, people. Oh, you're like that little Asian baby floating around Instagram who's like, thank you, mama. No, thank you, mama. <laughs> yes, mama. That was you. Yeah, at, that, at yeah, that was required. In your nasty ass, that was required. Toned, basketball fitted, big ass jersey, blue foams, North Face on the back. Proud. Queens, you know what it is. Q one eleven. Proud of it. PS whatever whatever. PS eighty junior high school seventy two Francis Lewis. PS three high school. And then Valley Stream Christian Academy for the rest of my days. <laughs> Jesus Christ, prison. Thank you guys for watching the <laughs> after show. Um, Love y'all, man. Indeed. Leave comments, share, like, all those things. Peace.